Okay, guys, we are back with unusual chickens for the exceptional poultry farmer by Kelly Jones. Um, and <clears throat> I realized not everybody ended exactly the same place this week. So if you get a couple pages that you might have already heard before, it's only a couple pages. I think one class ended on page 80, one class ended on page 83, and one class ended on page 85. So I'll try and do better next week. But here we go. This is uh, reading number five for unusual chickens uh, for the exceptional poultry farmer. June 17th, 2014. Agnes, Redwood Farm Supply Company, Gravenstein, California, 95472. Dear Agnes, I told my parents about Henrietta. There were some complications while they wanted to tell the lady who tried to steal her. She said she'd lost her chickens, but Mrs. O'Malley got dad straightened out. Why didn't you tell me the lady only has Rhode Island Reds? Anyway, it was a good thing you sent me your chicken class because when dad told mom and she pointed out that I didn't know anything about chickens and she didn't have time to teach me, I told them I was already signed up for your free curriculum so I could study over the summer. Mom is very big on education. She looked surprised but impressed when I showed her your worksheet and my chicken books from the library. She looked them over carefully and then she told dad that it was true if we were going to stay, I ought to learn something about farm life. Dad, who seems kind of depressed lately. He hasn't gotten a new job yet, and I think the farm's in worse shape than he expected. Said there's no way we'll have money for chicken feed or supplies this year. If we had any money left, I think we might be moving somewhere else soon. But don't worry, we don't have anywhere else to go. So I showed him my worksheet too, and I told him about the chicken food and the metal garbage can in the barn, and said one small chicken probably doesn't eat much but I'd calculate it anyway if he would help me weigh the can. No reason to bring up the black streaked chicken yet. I also pointed out that if it's summer, there's nothing to do. I don't know anybody and every kid I ever met was already gonna know about this stuff. So I might as well learn something before I tried going to school here. I went up to my attic room then since I couldn't get any more words out without crying. And I read my library books for a while. Mom and dad came up a little later and they both gave me big hugs. They decided I could try keeping Henrietta as long as we have chicken food, but that we just don't have enough money for extra pets right now. But don't worry, I'll find a way to earn some more money for feed so Henrietta and the other chicken can be safe. I'll try to catch it tomorrow. Sincerely, Sophie. Oh, <gasps> look what Sophie's gonna find. June 18th, 2014, Agnes, Redwood Farm Supply Company, Gravenstein, California, 95472. Dear Agnes, I have to tell you, even though I want to be an excellent chicken keeper, I wasn't so sure this course was going to work out. I mean, I don't want it to be too easy, but when I started working on lesson one, I had to borrow my mom's dictionary five times just to figure out what you were talking about. And then once I knew what you were saying, I got worried that maybe I was fe feeding Henrietta all wrong. I mean, I don't know exactly how old she is and I don't wanna damage her kidneys. And what if the stuff I found wasn't right? But when I looked in the nest box this morning, there was something that looked like a glass egg. Although I guess it probably isn't glass. If Henrietta laid it, it looks like glass and it feels like glass though, though I can't, I can't see anything inside and I can see all the way through it. Don't worry, I put it in the fridge right away in the back of the vegetable drawer so my parents wouldn't mess with it. So I guess she's a laying hen. She seemed pretty proud of herself, strutting around and squawking her head off when I told her she did a good job. It was a good thing I already told mom and dad about her. You could probably hear her all the way at the library. I still don't know when great uncle jim bought that food or anything but it would still be okay for now right and i don't know how many pounds i had so i couldn't calculate how long it would last me i couldn't lift the garbage can either 
So I had to get my dad's help. It turns out I have 33 pounds of layer crumble in that can. Well, a little less because of the can's weight, but I didn't want to empty it all to check that. So I should have enough for the whole summer. I did like the math part. I'm good at math and you explained how to do it all very clearly. I was pretty sure I got everything right, but I had my mom look it over just in case. And she said she was very impressed with my work. My mom doesn't just say things like that. And my dad liked learning about the diatoms. We made up a song about diatomaceous earth while we were driving into the post office today, just because we thought it sounded funny. So I guess it was okay in the end. I'm glad you had a list of what chickens should and shouldn't eat too. I found an old yogurt container to put in the fridge so we can save our scraps for Henrietta. Great Uncle Jim really didn't throw anything away, ever, or even recycle it. And I labeled it so dad wouldn't forget. I'll remind him when we cook and do the dishes too. Mom will like that. She hates to waste things. I think I'm ready for lesson two now. Sincerely, Sophie. P.S. It was pretty exciting to find that glass egg in the nest box. Like finding a treasure. I love having a chicken. June 18th, 2014. Mr. James Brown. Wherever you are now. Dear great uncle Jim. Today seemed like it was going to be great. My parents decided I could keep Henrietta. My mom took a break from writing and had breakfast with me and dad. And I made pancakes that were sort of shaped like chickens, if you used your imagination. It was sunny, but not too hot. And I found some old rope in the barn and dad even helped me make a swing out by the hen house before he had to go off for his job interview. I'm sorting the pile out there into different kinds of things so I can find them when I need them. You could build just about anything out of all that junk if you had enough time and imagination and could remember what pile the thing you needed was in. I guess that's why you saved it. Henrietta follows me around when I carry things from pile to pile, doing this very quiet clop and turning her head up to look at everything. She loves it when there's a bug under a piece of junk. She pounces on it and gobbles it right up. Then I sat in the broken chair and I read the rest of the Hoboken chicken emergency to Henrietta while she sat in the dust and fluffed up her feathers. I was worried she'd be scared when Henrietta in the book has to live all on her own, but she just closed her eyes and quietly and listened. I think she really liked it. I hope this town leaves my Henrietta alone, even though she's unusual too. After I took the book back to my room, I was heading to the barn when I heard a horrible noise, almost like a scream, but not human. I ran as fast as I could straight to the hen house. I couldn't see Henrietta anywhere. The door was shut, but I wrenched it open and looked inside. Henrietta was there glaring at me. I shut the door and latched it again and just about sat down right there on the dirt and the chicken poop. I was so relieved. Henrietta is one smart chicken. But what had made that sound? As I looked around, a cloud of crows flew over me straight for the woods in the back of the barn, cawing their heads off. They swooped and flew under a big fir tree, diving at something in the branches. Well, I've never seen it myself before, but I knew what that meant. Something they thought was bad news was in that tree. I started toward the tree, but I stopped short as soon as I came around the corner of the barn and flattened myself to the wall. Mrs. Grigson's orange pickup was parked on the old dirt road at the base of the fir tree. Standing next to it, looking up into the branches, was Mrs. Grigson. I don't think she saw me. I took a deep breath and thought for a moment. I was scared and I was mad and I wanted her to leave my farm and my chickens alone. But I also wanted to know what she was doing there. So I stayed where I was and I watched the fir tree and Mrs. Grigson. <clears throat> there was a big dark shape huddled on a branch with crows swooping around it. It hopped to a lower branch and turned to avoid another crow. And I saw it was mottled brown with reddish tail feathers. I knew that bird from my chicken book. It was a predator, all right. 
a red-tailed hawk right here on my farm, just a short ways from my chicken. Henrietta was safe in her, her house, I reminded myself, but I didn't feel better. My stomach turned over and over as I looked from the hawk to Mrs. Grigson and back. And then Mrs. Grigson gave a sharp whistle and the hawk looked at her too, just as she threw a handful of something on the ground. The hawk tipped its head to look just like a chicken. It jumped down off the branch and landed at her feet. A crow swooped down over it, but Mrs. Grigson waved it away and it went back up in the fur with the other crows. The hawk pecked the ground and as I watched, it started to change from being all bent over and hooked and sleek to a dark red chubby chicken with a huge red comb and a pointy chicken beak and a fluffy chicken butt. It stopped for a minute and crowed, just like an old McDonald. So I guess it was a rooster. The crows went quiet. Mrs. Griegson watched the chicken scratch for a few minutes. Then she grabbed the dog crate out of the back of her truck and threw another handful inside. The rooster ran inside the crate, chortling happily. Mrs. Griegson shut the door and put the crate in her truck. She stood and looked around for a minute, and I held my breath in the shadow behind the barn and was glad I was wearing a brown shirt and muddy jeans. Then she got in the truck and drove off. I ran right back to check on Henrietta. She was still in the hen house and seemed fine. I left her there. I know there are unusual chickens now, but I didn't know there were chickens that turned into hawks. My stomach hurts just thinking about it. What kind of farmer keeps a chicken that turns into a hawk and drives it around to other people's farms? I'm scared of that hawk. I'm really scared of Mrs. Grigson, but don't worry. That doesn't mean I won't try my hardest to keep Henrietta safe. Love, Sophie. P.S. I followed her tr t truck's tire tracks out to the road and shut the gate tight. I don't know if dad left it open or if she just opened herself and drove it right in. P.P.S. It was cracked corn she threw. I checked. Oh, there she is watching her, looking up in the tree at it. Oh, so here's a picture. So this is what the hawk looked like. And then this is what the chicken looks like. Hmm. You wouldn't exactly get those confused, would you? I don't think so. June 18th, 2014, later. Agnes, Redwood Farm Supply Company, Gravenstein, California, 95472. Dear Agnes, did you sell a rooster that turns into a red-tailed hawk to Mrs. Gregson on purpose? If so, I think that was a bad idea. She brought it to my farm today. When it turned into a chicken, it looked like a Rhode Island red. I don't know what she was doing here, but she didn't get Henrietta. She didn't get the invisible chicken either. I didn't even see it until she after she left. I was nervous and I went to check behind the barn one more time and something moved in the grass. It didn't look like a rat or a squirrel or even like a chicken. It wasn't that black thing either. It looked like a blurry part of the ground, like a puff of per fur needles and leaves and grass blades. I froze and I waited. After a long time, slowly, like a spell was wearing off, I saw a shadow of a chicken and then darker and lighter stripes. A while later, there was a regular looking fluffy black and white chicken pecking at the ground with a little red comb and yellow legs. I blinked, it was still there. So I took a step forward, it vanished. I couldn't leave it there to wait for Mrs. Grigson to come back. So I went and got the old dog crate out of the barn and a handful of sunflower seeds. I couldn't see anything when I got back to the crow's tree, not even a blur, and I felt pretty sad. But I put the crate down anyway and threw the sunflower seeds inside and left the door open.
after a few minutes, a chicken sized blur went in and I slammed the door shut. There was a horrible smell and I found out invisible chicken poop doesn't stay invisible. It was heavy and smelly and I was a little worried about what else this special chicken might be able to do, but I carried the crate all the way up to the hen house anyway. Henrietta came down from the hen house and looked hard at the crate. I put it down and I looked hard at it too. I know you said no chicks, but this new chicken looked like a girl chicken, not a rooster. It's kind of hard to tell when it keeps disappearing though. Finally, I gave up worrying about the new chicken and opened the crate door. We both watched while the rest of the sunflower seeds disappeared from inside. I sat very still and eventually two chickens were pecking around the yard. They seemed like they knew each other. The invisible chicken stayed visible the rest of the afternoon. Please tell me if it was Great Uncle Jim's too, so I can tell my parents it turned up and it's my responsibility. I haven't seen the black one lately. Sincerely, Sophie. P.S. You wouldn't have really sold a hawk chicken to Mrs. Griegson, would you? Did she steal it from you? P.P.S. Please tell me the hawk chicken isn't my responsibility too. Oh, I love this. So that's kind of what it looks like. And then it just disappears. Barred Plymouth Rock, also known as a barred rock. Standard height, fluffy black and white plumage with distinctive barring. Oh, that's what those stripes are called, bars. Huh, okay. Yellow featherless legs and feet. Small single red comb, red earlobes, large light brown eggs, steady layer, docile and friendly, good for children. Barred coloration helps this breed hide from predators. So the barred is the stripes. Cool. Hmm. Do we have time for another? I think we have time for one more chapter. June 19th, 2014. <laughs> Dear uh, Mr. James Brown, wherever you are now. Dear Great Uncle Jim, the disappearing chicken laid an egg this morning. I could tell it wasn't Henrietta's because it wasn't glass. It was like a fancy organic brown chicken egg that rich people buy at the store. I took it out of the nest box really carefully and put it in the fridge like Agnes said to, even though I could hardly wait to scramble it and eat it for breakfast. Maybe she'll lay another one. And then in a few days, I can make breakfast for mom and dad. They will just have to agree then that having a chicken is the best thing ever. After I did all my chicken chores and my regular chores, I checked to see which of my library books were due. I finally convinced mom and, <clears throat> and dad I could ride my bike into town on my own to go to the library. Dad thought I'd get lost because he has no sense of direction. And mom worried I'd get hit by a car because she's used to Los Angeles traffic. They both were afraid I'd get stuck somewhere in between with no cell phone service. But I reminded them that we live here now and I can't just stay on the farm for the rest of my life or wait for them to have time to drive me around whenever I want to go somewhere. I'm 12 after all, not eight. Sometimes I have things to do and it's only five miles to town. So even if I got a flat tire or the bike chain fell off, I could walk my bike home. Plus there's only one road to town. So if they got worried, all they'd have to do is drive in and find me. They finally agreed <clears throat> and I promised that if I went anywhere but the library, I'd lock my bike up outside so they would see it and they could find me if they needed to. I did ride a little extra carefully into town. The edge of the highway isn't very wide, you know, and people get in a hurry sometimes, and I didn't want to fall down into the grassy ditch next to the road. Dad says you took him down to catch tadpoles in the ditch in spring, and then they'd turn into frogs. But right now, it's too hot and dry to even have water in it. And there are lots of small hills between our farm and town. So my legs were pretty tired when I got there. Most of the buildings in town look there like they're from old timey days. Maybe when you were young, 
with those tall fronts that are just for show, like in Wild West movies. There are lots of stores that are just for the tourists. I don't bother with those. I love to look in the window of the bookstore, though. I bet you did, too. You sure had a lot of books all over the living room, but not many kids' books. The library is old, too, but newer than the rest of the town. I locked my bike up and went inside. Ms. O'Malley helped me find some more interesting, more chicken books. She thought I'd like one called Prairie Evers, and I think one called The Great Chicken Debacle sounds interesting. I gave her back the Hoboken chicken emergency, even though the new chicken hasn't heard it yet. Maybe I'll get it again tomorrow if neither of these is as good. There was a white girl with brown hair and brown eyes reading in the chair by the window. She looked like she might be about my age, and she was reading a book about llamas. I wonder if she has a llama. She looked up at her from her book and smiled at me, and I smiled back, but I couldn't think of anything to say to her. I don't know anything about llamas. So I put my books in my backpack and wheeled my bike up to the feed store. Maybe I'll see her again sometime. If I do, I'll ask her about llamas, I think, unless I feel too shy to talk. I like the feed store a lot. It's got almost everything. Hardware store stuff and feed and bits of tractors and plants with huge bags of stuff to kill bugs and weeds and cans of paints and even animals. There aren't even any chicks right now because it isn't the time of the year when they get them. But Jane, who works at the paint counter, says they get hundreds every springs and sometimes ducklings too. She saw me admiring all the colors of the paint chips and told me I could take some, but I just shook my head. My mom says it isn't right to take things we won't use, even when it's just paint chips. We're still clearing all kinds of things out of the house, so I can't even see the walls yet but I already know which one I'd paint my room if we could afford it. It's the most beautiful yellow ever, like baby chick fluff, and it's called Sunflower Sky. Isn't that a great name? Anyway, today I wasn't there just to look around like when I come in with dad and he takes forever deciding which kind of wire to get. Today, I needed to find out about chicken food and how much it cost. Because even though I already have calculated that I have enough food left to feed Henrietta until after school starts, now that I have the invisible chicken too, oh, plus even though I already calculated they have enough, now I have that invisible chicken too. Plus Agnes says the black streak is one of my chickens too. I just don't know how about to go about cutting catching it yet. And I need to have a plan before I tell mom and dad about the others. Chicken food comes in really big bags. I was afraid they'd be expensive, but they're mostly under $30. Of course, that's still expensive for me and my parents since we haven't got any money. I went into the next aisle with the feeders and waterers and scoops and everything so that I could think. There was a beautiful metal can that said it was a waterer and it had a lucky clover on it, and another one that was open on top that said it was a feeder. If I ever have extra money, I'm gonna buy them for Henrietta. They would look just right in her hen house. As I walked down the aisle, I heard someone asking what to do for her sick chicken. My stomach flopped over funny, and I stopped to listen, even though I didn't want to think, even think about my chickens ever getting sick. I don't know anything about sick chickens, so maybe I could learn what to do. The person she was talking to sounded like exactly the right person to ask. She was friendly, but practical. She had suggested a lot of cheap things like baths with Epsom salts and even feeding the chicken some olive oil. She suggested putting the chicken in a quiet, dark place by itself for a few days and said the lady could come back in any time if she needed more help. They sounded like they were coming closer, and I looked up as they walked by the end of my aisle, still talking. Great Uncle Jim, I'm sorry to tell you this, but the really helpful lady was Miss Grigson. I hope you don't wish she had your chickens instead of me. Love, Sophie. P.S. 
I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm glad you can't write back and tell me if it would be best if I gave them to her instead of keeping them. P.P.S. I'm really trying to learn as fast as I can. P.P.P.S. Dad didn't get the job. He was pretty upset. I wish he knew enough about farms to work at the feed store. P.P.P.P.S. Maybe I'll get him some books on farming when I go back to the library tomorrow. Okay, I was gonna stop there, but I really wanna see this letter from Agnes. So here we go. Redwood Farm, send with lesson two top drawer. I don't know what all these DXs are. Dear Sophie, you're doing great. The new chicken is a barred rock. She just blends in like a chameleon. She doesn't actually disappear. Her feathers change color. Delicious eggs and lots of them. Collect every day and refrigerate for at least three days before using, just to make sure no chicks develop. We don't know where she's been living. The black cochin likes tomatoes. Good luck catching her. She's very fast. Good eggs too. Sorry about the hawk. I gave it to her, but I didn't mean for things to turn out like this. I'll write to some friends and see if they can take the chickens for you. Regular chickens are much easier. Thank you, Agnes. Ooh, and when we pick back up, we will be on lesson two. Hmm. I'm a little curious about this. I wonder what Sophie's going to think about this letter she wrote that Agnes wrote. Huh. I don't think she's going to want somebody else to take her chickens, but we'll see. 